You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. This is Paul from Necker Panther, and you're listening to Buzz Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Boz Mayhem Radio Network and staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Boz Mayhem Radio Network. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I bring you guys and gals awesome interviews. And today, it's a huge honor and privilege to welcome Paul Anup, vocalist and guitarist of Necro Panther. Necro Panther has released their third EP, In Depths We Sleep, the latest in an ongoing series of EP releases from the band. We're going to be talking to him about this and what's all going on with the band and uh, all that good stuff. So, Paul, man, welcome to the show, and how you been doing? Oh, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Not a problem. Glad to have you on the show. So how, how excited are you to hopefully get back out on the road soon, do some touring, do some live shows? Because th- there are some, some things coming out to right now in, in the next few months. So how excited are you? Oh, man, we... Me personally, I'm super excited, and as a band, we are we just can't wait to get back at it because you know that's one of the things about being in a band that makes it so fun is getting in front of people and sharing your music and your passion and sharing stories and just having a good time. So we we just can't wait. Personally, we're all getting vaccinated and we're all you know starting to practice sets up again and. We're going to hopefully start to book some local shows and maybe some out-of-town stuff as well for later in this year. Now, I know you guys have been doing this for a very long time, but getting back into uh, the practice mode, a little rust here and there, doing some practice on this? (laughs) Oh, yeah, for sure. So we took about almost a year, about a year off from practicing together. Um, So when we did finally get back and actually practice as a band, um, there was a bit of rust, but you know, I was a little surprised at how well we actually came together. First two or three times, we kept getting better, and this last week when we practiced again, we sounded pretty good. I was like, man, I'd be happy to get in front of an audience and start showing them this stuff again. Did you find yourself doing anything differently other than working on music, such as like collecting or catching up on anything that you might have been missing out on, maybe? Well, you know, like just been at home a lot and I've got an, about an acre property here. So I've just been, you know, working on the house a lot and doing a lot outside with my dogs and <laughs> just, you know, hanging out with the missus and, you know, just taking life a little bit easier than I normally have. So maybe that's, maybe that influenced a little bit of the slower doomier album that we just released. This is Necro Panther's third EP, In Depths We Sleep. How does it feel to have a third EP in the Necro Panther music library, man? How, how excited are you guys to have this one in there as well? Well, it's really cool because the way we decided to um, write and record the EPs is that we would do them ourselves as far as recording and production, and that one member of the band would be the main songwriter and um, composer for the EP. And they basically have the final say in what the music is going to be and what the other members play. And this is completely different from our normal full lengths where we completely collaborate with all the songs. We all write songs and we all come together. So the EPs are a little bit special for each of us. So for me, this one, I completely wrote, um, the lyrics, I wrote all the music and then just kind of orchestrated with the guys on, you know, what they should do. And we played off each other. So for me, it's really exciting to get this out. That was going to be my next question, because I know you guys, like you said, you do it, you do it a little bit differently than any other bands. Each band member writes their own EP. Do you guys like this? Do you like seeing this from each member of their own taste and their own style, their, their own thoughts coming to life on their own EP? Yeah, I I mean, I think it's refreshing, and we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves into a specific genre 
of metal. You know, we like to, we're, we're all rock and roll and metal heads, you know, we'll never go away from that. But we love to explore all the subgenres and different, you know, musical textures within that realm of um, hard rock and metal. And we, it, it might be a little bit difficult to understand someone's song or where they're coming from when they first present it to the band. But once we work through it and they explain more about it, it's really refreshing. And I think it pushes us all musically and it challenges us and makes us better musicians. Did it challenge you as a band because of COVID bringing this EP to life possibly? Oh yeah, for sure. This was, we had several um, setbacks just because of, you know, stay at home orders um, in the, our state in particular. So we had drums set up and we were ready to record. And then it's like, okay, we got to wait a couple more weeks. So we pieced it together a little bit slower this time. This was also the first time that we weren't able to get all together in the same room face to face to talk through things. It was the drummer coming over to my house by himself and I tracked the drums and then the bassist come over to my house by himself and I tracked the bass and Joe, our lead guitarist tracked his own at his house and emailed them to me. So that was a little bit challenging, but it was also refreshing to know that we could do that. If say one of us decides to move halfway across the world, we could totally continue to be a band and continue to put out music. So that was, that was a good, a good learning process for us. Yeah, that, that's going to be my next thing to say. You know, thank God that uh, for technology right now, because you could actually do your own thing and then email it to somebody and they can work on the track and mix their stuff to it. So thank God for technology for now. You know what I mean? So, so good to good. Yeah. Good yeah. And it's moved forward so fast. Like even within the last 10 years, that is just now becoming a reality. And actually the files are good enough quality and you can email them fast enough now that it's doable. Mm hmm. Back in the day, you'd e try to email someone files, and it's just like, okay, 18 hours until you can get your files. <laughs> and now it's just instantaneous, so it's great. Oh, God, man. I work in technical support, and, and I, I, I cringe sometimes when there'll be little, little kids ask me about internet stuff, and I'll say, you know, thank God that you didn't live in dial up era because you wouldn't survive. You, you would go crazy. Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> as a band, were you a little nervous releasing this EP right now since bands can't tour, can't really do nothing much at all? Um, so for the EPs, we also not only decided that a single person in the band would write and be the, the composer for it, but we also decided that they weren't going to be put into our usual live show. Mm. So we weren't too concerned about putting it out because we're not concerned about playing these songs live as much as we are our full length. That's where we're really trying to push. This is Necropanther. This is who we are. And the EPs are like, here's a little special look at one of the band members of Necropanther's specific kind of writing musical style. So this is basically like a one-off deal. Like, okay, here's our EP. Now you got to wait for the, the actual full length and we'll do them live. Do y'all even think about putting some of these these songs off of EPs into the set list, though? I mean, just, just to get them to play live sometimes? Yeah, so that's one thing that we started discussing in the last few months since we, um, since we released our drummer's single um, at Unity Leave right at the beginning of the pandemic. We released it February, I believe, of last year. And um, this one, right, almost and the conclusion of the pandemic we've been talking about it'd be fun to maybe pick one from each ep you know pick one from our bassist ep oppression play et unitig live pick one from my ep and also in the future our lead guitarist joe he's got some ideas in the works so our next ep will actually be from him yeah, that's what I was going to say. You got one more in the installments of EP. So you got three. You got one more coming out. So are, are we going to see this down the line again from you guys? Maybe? You know, we haven't really thought about it, but if you had to, ask, if you asked me one off, I would say, yeah, I would love to do it again. I would love to explore the idea again of having each member, you know, put their voice out there a little bit stronger than just all 100% collaboration. I think it's a cool change. I think it's a little bit different. 
And like you said, man, it keeps it fresh. And I mean, for me, that would interest me a, a lot being in the band, you know, because it's like, hey, I can't wait till I put my EP out and, and see who else puts their EP out. You know what I mean? That That's what keeps a band fresh to me. That that That's what keeps it more exciting. Yes, exactly. What's impressed or excited you the most about making the new EP, if anything? What sticks out the most for you, man? I think the fact that I wrote these songs, actually, I wrote um, three of the songs about 12 years ago wow. and one of the songs is new so i think what what impressed me the most is when i wrote them i recorded them on a little tiny crappy boss 12 track recorder and um i just programmed the drums played the bass played the guitar into the box you know into their little preset amp models and um i came up with an album and then i came up with a little ep and it was basically just for me and my close friends. And I thought to myself at the time, no one will ever play these with me live. I'll <laughs> never record these again. It's just going to be a one-off thing. And then after the years go by, I'm in this band and we're talking about doing EPs. And I'm talking about what I used to do back in the day. And I showed the guys some of the songs and they were pretty stoked on them, even though they're completely different than what we normally do. And so I was very surprised and very happy that after 12 years of these songs kind of being in my back pocket in the back of my mind, they came to a reality and actually had a real band play it. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. But when you go back down that street and you hear those, those songs from 12 years ago, are you going, Oh God, please let this sound good. Please. Did that ever cross your mind going back, going to listen to this 12 years ago? So I, I, I listened to the original ones a lot and I, and they were in my brain for, you know, the last 10, 12 years. And what was also refreshing and exciting was that I got to kind of rethink them. I got to rewrite them a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. with a fresh mind and then with fresh, really great musicians that added some awesome stuff of their own to it. And I would, that I would have never thought of on my own. So the, Initial song structures were there, but we really worked these up to more of a, of a, okay, this is a today's take on these songs from 12 years ago. Yeah. And it's cool to go back to see what you were thinking 12 years ago till now. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Any tracks standing out more to you than any right now on this EP? I know it must change every time you listen to it, and I know these are your babies, Paul, but are there any that stick out for you possibly? Well, I think I think my favorite and the one that we would probably end up playing live is uh, Benthic Storms, which is uh, track number two. And it's the most, um, more like our normal Necropanther sound. It's kind of black and thrash, little melodic death metal, so... It's more of kind of our normal, and it's the newest song, too. So I think just getting back into that mindset of, of when I was writing 10, 12 years ago and trying to come up with a new song in, within that mindset, that was a bit of a challenge, but it was also cool, and I think I, I think I pulled it off pretty well. I think it blends in well with the rest of the album. So was there a song that you were working on this EP that totally ended up sounding different than intended to, than what it was originally thought of? Yeah, actually, um, Abyssal Plains is the instrumental song on the album, which when I wrote the songs, they were all instrumental. So I added lyrics and vocals as well this time, which was different and new. Um, but yeah, Abyssal Plains started out as, it was just going to be really chill the whole way through. But when we got into recording the drums, Hoken just, started wailing on it halfway through the song and i was like man that sounds amazing <laughs> let's do let's do like half of the song kind of chill and then half of the song you know pretty much full force hard driving and it ended up being a lot cooler than i thought it would be and it was all because of a drum beat that he was playing i thought this is pretty cool the, the title in depths we sleep is from the lyrics of one of the songs what was it about that title that grabbed your attention to say, I want that to be the actual EP title? So I am obsessed with the ocean. It is like my main love in life besides playing music and stuff. I'm a uh, scuba diving instructor. 
And when I was writing these songs, I was actually living in the Caribbean, working as a scuba instructor, teaching people how to dive, driving the boats, taking them underwater and showing them all this stuff. So I'm obsessed with the ocean already. And um, basically, when I started tracking initially, I decided to release it under the name Whale Falls which is what happens when a whale dies, their carcass sinks to the bottom of the ocean and all the creatures can live off of its carcass for several years. And um, I, I thought just In Depths We Sleep was kind of an homage to a past whale that was sleeping in the depths of the ocean. I've got to ask this since you are a uh, scuba diver. Have you had any intense moments, like any sharks or anything like that, that kind of made you think, oh, God, not right now. This is good. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. I, it, to me, it's natural. So, like, when I grew up, when I was really young, I would watch Jacques Cousteau and all that stuff and watch, you know, Discovery Channel. And I was just obsessed with being underwater and swimming underwater and I always wished I could breathe underwater. So when one of my uncles... um was a scuba diver. And so when I was really young, I was like, I want to go scuba diving. I want to go scuba diving. So since I can remember, I've wanted to do it and I've been doing it since I was 12 years old and I'm now 36. So, you know, if you start doing something when you're 12 years old, you have no fear. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't, you know, you're not afraid of sharks. You're not afraid of fish. You're just like, wow, this is awesome. (laughs) So I really built up that just love for the ocean. And it's just a natural thing for me. It's like, I, I, I've never been, I've never had a panic attack underwater or been afraid of nothing like that. How was working with Max Sherman who did the artwork for Repeat? Oh man, he's such a cool guy. Like he, he's a great artist and he's just a good friend, really chill. And he nails anything that we send his way. We, I can literally give him a paragraph description of what I wanted And he sent back something that blew me away and was better than I had hoped for. So it's super awesome. And we're lucky to have such a chill, cool guy that we can work with. Um, We've decided that he was basically going to be our primary artist from now on. And we like his style. We think it's cool. Um, And so we'll definitely be moving forward with him in the future. Doing this EP, though, did, did it actually let you musically grow? you know, let you escape for a little bit to do your own thing and and grow as a musician? You know, I actually, I kind of started trying to write music for our next full length before I started working on the EP. Like during the pandemic happened and then we weren't going to be able to get together with the EP and I didn't know what was happening. And so I just started writing songs and just playing guitar and stuff just started flowing out of me. It was kind of weird, like, just knowing that I had the EP songs ready to go, they were fully written and just kind of waiting to track them. I had no obligations, no time crunch, no, I didn't know when we were going to be able to play a show next, you know? So it was very free. And I think that allowed me just to kind of open up and say, okay, here's 12 semi done songs for our next album. So yeah, I think I think it helped. It just kind of helped free my mind a bit, not having anything on a time crunch. What do you hope everyone takes away or message you hope they hear while listening to this EP or any of Necro Panther's music in general? Paul, what do you hope they get from it? I hope they have a fun time listening to it and I hope that they can they can see that we're having a fun time making it. We're not like a super serious band. We don't want to, you know, be hardcore metal guys with grimaces all the time. You know, we all have normal jobs and we do this because we love to play music and we love metal. So I think what what I really, I just want people to enjoy it. And, you know, if they want, if they like it, they like it. And I just hope they can understand that, you know, we, we just had a lot of fun making it. What made you want to become a musician? What was that spark for you that said, I I definitely want to try this? Well, I was young. I was like an 80s baby. So when uh, I was young, MTV would be on and, you know, I would see Guns N' Roses and Metallica and, you know, coming up and their music videos would be on. And I was like, man, those guys look cool. Their attitude is cool. 
you know, like, I just thought it was the coolest thing. I was a six-year-old kid watching Guns N' Roses and Metallica saying, that's what I want to do. And that's kind of what shaped me as a person, you know, kind of how I lived my life was just seeing seeing the people on MTV and being like, wow, that's cool. Back in the day, man, it was so cool to go to, like, a, a grocery store somewhere or even a pharmacy and grab the Hit Parade or Circus Magazine or uh, Guitar World or something like that, so that way you can keep up with your favorite band. And it, it was kind of scary to read on them a little bit because you didn't really know much about them. It's just that's the look that you saw of the band in the magazine, and you go buy their music. Nowadays, yep. and nowadays it's like at the tip of your finger on the computer, and it kind of takes that, I don't know, that suspicion away, if that makes sense. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. no, I know what you're saying. It takes the mystery away, yeah. you know, like, you you see you see these guys and they're dressed like crazy you know you're like well, what are these guys wearing you know they look like they just rolled out of bed and put on whatever they you know <laughs> slapped together leather and jeans and hat whatever hat and sunglasses they had on and you know and they give a crazy interview where they're already drunk in the interview and that's all you have <laughs> yeah you know and you're like wow these guys are crazy it's mysterious and it's you know it's exciting. And like you said, nowadays they've got Twitter and you can go on their social media and list and literally get into their head with exactly what their thoughts are and how they feel and their political stance right there at your fingertips. Yeah, like back in the day when we grew up, like you said, Guns N' Roses was a big one. Metallic was a big one. Poison, of course. I mean, for me, I liked Poison. I don't care what anybody thinks. I liked them. You know, but yeah, no, I mean, I was a hair metal guy too. I like all metal. <laughs> yeah, bands like that, man, you, you go... And you see now, it's like, oh, I had a hamburger for lunch. Uh, okay. Um, okay, metal. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay. <laughs> it takes that, like you said. Yep. It takes all that away now. But it, it's cool. I still like to see it, though. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know when you was growing up, you had a lot of music that you had to choose from. and But did you have a go-to album or a song that just allowed you to escape or gave you inspiration or maybe you just had to have that album like every once every two weeks to listen to, man. Did you have that possibly? Well, uh, there was actually two that come to mind. And number one is Appetite for Destruction from Guns N' Roses. Because I had a tape player and I rode the bus to school. And that one was in my tape player every day. And I would listen. And I was the first one that got picked up on the bus and the last one that got dropped off. So I was on the bus for like an hour and a half both ways. So I was that tape would be in my player and I'd be on my headphones for an hour and a half there and an hour and a half back. And um, so that's definitely my number one influential album. Number two would be um, Metallica Master of Puppets. Uh, my babysitter, she was in high school in mid 80s and um, she, you know, was into music. And so she was on the popular music train. She was into the hair metal and kind of introduced me to other things and she played that metallica album and i was just blown away and i listened to that a lot with her in the car so you, you know I, i've said this a million times and and i'm gonna say this to the day i die that album by metallica master of puppets saved my life when i needed music at that time but it actually saved my life yeah oh ryan i can literally like if i'm having a tough time if i'm having a bad day if i'm having an emotional time stressful anxiety you can throw on that song for me and i'll i'll, I'll be great i could listen to that song 10 times in a row and i'll be super chill and like cool by the end of that oh my god yes oh ryan that's the song that well that's the instrumental that uh saved me that night my night i'll 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 leave it at that so yeah, I, 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 well, I, 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 uh, Mr. Cliff Burton, a huge, huge thank you. I know he's in heaven, but uh, those guys, uh, they put a masterpiece together with that album. That's just my opinion. I agree. Folks, you want to get out and pick up Necro Panther's new third EP, In Depths We Sleep, and you want to pick that up right now. Plus, they got some other stuff that's going to drop later. Please get out and support this band. You will not be disappointed. So, Paul, how could folks stay in touch with you guys? If they want to say hello, buy some merchandise, buy this EP, and all things down the pipe for Necro Panther. How can they do that? Yeah, so just follow us on Bandcamp. You can get all of our merch there, buy all of our albums there. If you're into one album, you can buy one. If you're into all of them, I believe we've got them all bundled up for a little special, special price. So you basically save 
save your money on one album to buy them all and it's only like 25 or 30 bucks for three full lengths and three EPs <laughs> who can complain about that exactly that is cheap but that, that, but that's yeah awesome. necropanther at bandcamp.com is where you can find all of us you can also follow us on twitter too paul before i let you go would you care to do a promo for my show sure yeah sure let's do it this is paul from necropanther and you're listening to bob's mayhem hour Everybody stick around. We've got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Hour podcast. Please get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and our YouTube link, and you definitely want to subscribe to our YouTube link because we have lots of good stuff coming up to give away for all of you guys and gals out there. Please get out and support Necro Panther. Pick up their third EP, In Depths We Sleep. So you definitely want to pick that up and support these guys. Like I said, pick up their old stuff as well. And like Paul said, man, you can buy three EPs and three full lengths, I think he said, for like 30, 20, 30 bucks, something like that. Yeah. That, yeah, it's less than 30 bucks. Yeah, I mean, that, that's awesome. You can help out a band. That's gas money, food money, hotel money for these guys. So help them out. Paul, I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck, my man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.